We want to take a look at uh, erratic motion. Uh, basically the idea here is that we're going to be looking at graphs of position, velocity, and accelerations as function of time or in some cases as functions of each other even though I'm not going to cover that. Your book does talk about things like acceleration as a function of position, accelerations as a function of velocity graphically. But I'm specifically going to look at position, velocity, and acceleration as functions of time. And oftentimes these functions are not necessarily the same function throughout. They're piecewise functions. Generally they'll be continuous, though not always. Uh, but they become important and they become commonplace because in many experimental data collection techniques that we use today, the motion sensors that we use are going to graph position versus time. And from that position versus time data set, they're going to calculate velocity versus time and graph that and then acceleration versus time and graph that and the functions may be smooth looking or they may not but in general they're not the same mathematical representation so we want to take a look at what these graphs are going to be able to tell us so we'll start off with a position versus time graph this is very commonplace if I had an object undergoing free fall, time along the x-axis, and position x or s along the y-axis, then in a free fall situation, this graph might look parabolic. Uh, could be up, could be down, depends on how you want to look at it. That's not the point. The point is, is that you're going to have a graph. Well, let's not choose a parabolic graph. Let's choose some arbitrary graph. Then, what do we get? Well, keep in mind that by definition, the velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. But when I have an xt graph, position versus time graph, dx dt is rise over run. But rise over run is slope. And so at some location on this graph, Pick any arbitrary point, I'll just choose here. There's a slope tangent to that curve, and this slope, the slope of this line, this tangent line, is the velocity. And you can see that the slope here at point 1 is very different than the slope here at point 2. So clearly, the velocity is changing okay, because those slopes are different, so the velocity is undergoing change. On the other hand, acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time. The first derivative of velocity with respect to time, but we don't have a velocity time graph, we have a position time graph. It's the second derivative, and this is concavity. Is the graph concave up or concave down? So in this location, it's concave down. So the acceleration here must be negative. But over in this location, it's concave up. So the acceleration here is positive. Okay, so negative acceleration where it's concave down. Positive acceleration where it's concave up. So a position versus time graph will tell us where we are. It will tell us the velocity by looking at the slope. And it will give us the sign of the acceleration by looking at whether or not it's concave up or concave down. Velocity versus time graph will do similar things for us. So time along the horizontal axis, velocity along the vertical. Remember, acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And so, if I have a graph here of velocity versus time, then the slope at any point, perhaps here, or here, or here, the slope at those points is the acceleration. Now you'll notice from here 
to here, from zero time to some later time, the velocity is always above the t-axis. That is to say, throughout this interval, the velocity is positive. But you'll notice at some locations, like in here or in here, the, the acceleration, the slope, is negative. So again, velocity and acceleration don't have to have the same sign. Let me remind you also that if acceleration is greater than zero and velocity is greater than zero, then speed is increasing. But if the acceleration is greater than zero and the velocity is less than zero, speed is decreasing. In a similar fashion, if the acceleration is less than zero and the velocity is less than zero, speed is increasing, velocity is becoming more negative, but if the acceleration is less than zero and the velocity is greater than zero, in that scenario, speed is increasing. Apologize for my handwriting here on the edge. All right, what else can we get from this graph? We can also get displacement, not position, displacement. So if I go from some value of time, let's call this T1, and I'll just draw that up here, over here to T2, then I can shade in this yellow area. Hopefully you can see that. And that yellow area, I'll write this in black though, the yellow area is the displacement from T1 to T2. Notice, not the position. It's not telling me whether my position is positive or negative. All it's telling me is what my change in position is. What is my change in position? If I were looking at a different area, let's say this area over here in the green, notice that this displacement, delta x, is less than zero meaning I'm moving to the left. Well, that makes sense. My velocity is negative. So, of course, I'm moving towards the left side because my velocity is to the left. So, areas can be negative, and that indicates a negative displacement. All right, so the velocity versus time graph can tell us acceleration, and it can tell us displacement. Finally, the acceleration versus time graph Time here, acceleration here. What we can get from this graph is the change in velocity. And it's an interval, okay? So remember that dv dt is equal to acceleration, and so dv is equal to a dt. And so if I integrate the right-hand side, that's the area under the curve and this is the change in velocity it's not the velocity it's the change in velocity and so i might have using yellow again an area from here let's say to here t1 t2 And that yellow area is the change in velocity. Keeping in mind that here, delta V is greater than zero, but in this location, delta V is less than zero. So be careful of your signs. If I add these two areas together, the one on the left is clearly larger than the one on the right. You have a large positive, a small negative, add them together, you're going to get a smaller but positive number. All right, so you're basically subtracting 
this area from this area. So be wary of that.